Welcome to the 10K Creator, a podcast with me, Darren Smith from Craftsman Creative, and your own Joe Polizzi, where we document and break down how I and other content entrepreneurs can get to 10,000 email subscribers and $10,000 per month in revenue. All right, welcome back to the 10K Creator podcast slash show. My name is Joe Polizzi from The Tilt. I'm so happy you're with us again. We've had some great reaction to the podcast so far. I'm going to welcome in my friend from Craftsman Creative, Darren Smith. Darren, how you doing? Hey, hey, Joe. I'm good today. I'm really good. I'm excited how this has come together so far, and I already feel like progress is being made. It's it's a fun journey so far. Don't let anyone tell you you can't start a project in a couple months and just have this <laughs> thing take off. Like we are in the thick of it now. This is episode five. We're going. You know, we're kind of following your journey. You know, we're we're up to the point. I think I like I'm gonna really like this episode. I think people are gonna enjoy this because we're gonna get to the point where you're at. Because we were sort of leading up to it. You've been do, doing your content creator, content entrepreneur journey for, for quite a while, and now we're at the point. So so what I want this show to be about is kind of the level set, figure out what your action items should be moving mm-hmm. forward. And then I've, I've got a special surprise at the end about where we're going to take this thing as well. Hey there, we will get right back to the show after a few quick words about our incredible sponsors. Whether you have an established following or you're just starting out, books are an easy way to build credibility, diversify your revenue streams, and connect with your community. And just like Darren, you can use Lulu's free platform to turn your best performing content into a beautiful book to benefit your creative endeavors. With their e-commerce plugins, growing your audience and selling your work directly has never been easier. Create an account today to publish, print, and prosper at lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com. Watch your first YouTube video, read your first blog post, find your first newsletter, listen to your first podcast episode. Now, compare it to your most recent piece of content. It's night and day, isn't it? That's how much your content has grown, how much you've grown. If you're like most creators, your email marketing platform reminds you of that first creative effort. It has not kept up. You need a fresh start. Get that fresh start with ConvertKit. StreamYard is the easiest way to create content right in your browser. You can multi-stream to your social media platforms, host a weekly show with special guests, create webinars, record podcasts, create videos, and more. And they make it easy to brand and customize your videos inside the studio before you even go live. StreamYard is a popular tool amongst live streamers, video creators, YouTubers, and podcasters. StreamYard makes it simple to get professional and polished content every time. Get started now for free at StreamYard.com. Darren, why don't you give us the state of the union, where you're at with the business right now from a subscription standpoint and from a revenue standpoint, and then we can kind of figure out where we're going to go from here. Amazing. I love that. I was this close to like full swagging out today because I have a Lulu shirt that I got at CEX. I'm right here. I'm drinking out of my Create Every Day bottle from ConvertKit. I don't have any StreamYard swag though, so I felt bad about like only pimping to them. Well, see, now you're going to have to talk to Joanne. <laughs> Little nudge, nudge to the StreamYard guys. Like, hey, yeah. swag. <laughs> Are we overselling this? Like we might be, over- <laughs> we might be overselling not. it a little bit. Just, but For those that are like, no, you're underselling it, head over to, to my blog because I'm doing some really special like walkthrough videos of these three apps because I use all three of them. I use Lulu to print my books. I use ConvertKit every day and have been a user since 2013. I consider myself a bit of a power user when it comes to like email sequences and automations and tagging and segmenting. And StreamYard is new for me, but my goodness, was it easy. So hopping on, setting up a stream and hitting record, I don't know that there's an easier way to yeah. do that. So And the YouTube version. Yeah, I mean, we're recording yeah. the podcast with StreamYard and then the obviously the, the YouTube version is using StreamYard as well. So exactly. It, 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 it's worked well. The, the evil plan that we had has worked <laughs> really well. So anyways, yeah. give us the state yeah. of the union. Where, where are you at right now? Amazing. Okay. So state of the union, um, craftsman creative, the 
content entrepreneur side of Craft and Creative, I consider it starting about August of 2021. So about a year and a month ago as we're recording this. Um, but I've been a creative entrepreneur, like I said in a previous episode, since 2006. I've been uh, running my own business and making money as a creative entrepreneur. So I have a full-time income from producing and I own a business uh, that does online courses. And so that's, I think, important context for people that like this side hustle content entrepreneur thing is what I'm trying to grow. So right now, my total email list, which includes everyone from the courses, previous email segments and email lists, and my current newsletter is at right under 2,500 email subscribers. But the one that I'm trying to grow with this project, this 10K creator project, is my newsletter segment. And that's at 850 right now. And it's growing about 10 to 20 people per week. Um, I'd love to get that to 10 to 20 a day. And I expect that, you know, we'll get there at some point. And I'm excited to for that part of the journey. Um, so that's where the the audience size is. I consider it about 850. And again, because I want to build my business on email on a property that I own and not, you know, social media, I have been focusing on Twitter and I'm just at about 24, 2,500 Twitter followers. And that's been growing really well. Um, but I want to make sure if I'm growing there and the email list is not growing, that's not the outcome that I'm after. And just vanity metrics on Twitter, impressions and retweets and likes and all that stuff, they don't really matter unless it's bringing in more of the right audience that I care about through email. So that's the email side, the audience side. And then on the revenue side, my uh, content entrepreneur you know, business fluctuates a lot month to month. There's some months that are a few hundred dollars and there's some months that are $2,500 because of a consulting gig or a new coaching client. So I would say the average of the last three months is $1,500 a month. That's a good figure to kind of start from. And as we kind of go through the podcast, I'll just give updates every episode. I'm like, all right, I, you know, I've added this much more monthly revenue to that number. So 850 on the audience side, 1500 a month on the revenue side. All right. Thank you. That was perfect. That's exactly where we need to go. And I'm going to rip it to shreds. <laughs> just kidding. No. Oh, so I'm first so of all, <laughs> no, first of all, congratulations. You should know, and you probably already do this because you've been around this industry a long time as well. Most people don't make it a year and a month. They, you know, they they get to that six to nine month level. They haven't hit the numbers. A lot of people think that it it's oh, we can quickly get this thing done. But you know, as we talk about in the content ink model, I mean you get to building your base and audience building around 12 to 18 months. It's where you where a lot of people hit their first dollar. If you look at tilt research, the average person gets to about six, six and a half months where they get their first dollar. You know, 17 to 25 months is when we're really starting to make it an actual business. So mm -hmm. you're not at that point yet. We we still have some time to get there. You're on a right trajectory. But what what I want to talk about, and we talked about your content tilt or your area of differentiation. Right. This is a perfect time to look at and almost question that. I'm not questioning yours. And I know we've talked about it on the last few episodes about your craftsman approach and how you see your business different than a lot of the other people in this area targeting this audience. But you really, now is the time before you go for the next six to nine months to question it. Is it right? Is is this an area that you can truly differentiate yourself over and above everyone else? Because everybody believes that. But you get a lot of content creators that lead passion first. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with passion. I mean, we're you're passionate, I'm passionate, everybody's passionate about what we're doing. But passion does not pay for the bills, folks. So this is where you really want to make sure that, hey, if, is this an area that I can actually make money at? So do you have an audience that actually has the money to pay for the services that you're going to provide or whatever revenue levers? I'm going to talk about a lot of those. And as well, do you have sponsors? Do you have people that can actually pay for larger chunks of business, consulting gigs, sponsorships? If you do an event, you have event sponsorships, other things like this, this episode that, or that this uh, program that we're doing, we're able to sponsor because these sponsors want to reach people like you listening to this whole thing. So I want to stop there for a second, Darren, and go to have you thought about whether or not this niche, and it's so crowded in this area that we're at, 
Do you believe? Do you, are you concerned? I know I do all the time. I always come back to ours with the tilt. And because we, we've changed our mission a few times, and now we're really focusing on content entrepreneurs who don't want to rely on social media platforms as a differentiation point. This content entrepreneur, I believe, that's like, we're not going all in on TikTok or YouTube shorts or anything. We're really focusing on control channels, email, podcast, Web3, those types of things. Let's talk about yours. Are you concerned? Are you looking at it? Where are we at with your, your content tilt? Yeah, I've definitely had moments of concern throughout the last year um, because when I started out, I was trying to reach artists and creators. That's a really way too broad audience. Broad. And so yeah. by the time the book came about and I started writing it, I had narrowed it down to artists and creators, really creators who are at five figures a year and trying to get to six. And my assumption there is that they're trying to act like an artist and not like an entrepreneur. So they have to bring in some business side into their work into their creative life in order to turn it into a business that can do six and even seven figures at some point. So I definitely, um, I think the concern that I run into a lot is, oh, so-and-so is already doing it and maybe even doing it better. I look at creators online that I follow and I'm even friends with and I go, man, I, I think we're serving enough of a different audience that I've got a, a slot there. I've got a lane. Um, but if that person ever expanded a little bit, they'd eat, you know, eat my lunch kind of thing. So that's more of the yeah. concern I've had. Um, I do feel like I've narrowed in properly on the audience and I know their pain points. And I, know, I know their desires, but uh, I think the concern comes back to me. Am I doing enough to serve them? And, and you, by the way, this is an ongoing journey. I mean, even when we started what became Content Marketing Institute in 2007, we went through multiple iterations, really didn't hit hard on, on what our differentiation point was going to be until about 2011, 12. By the way, just so people know, I, we talked about this a little bit, but we were just targeting content marketers at businesses, very, very broad at the time, I didn't think so. But then when we started to go up directly against HubSpot with inbound marketing, who were targeting small businesses, I said, oh my gosh, with their resources, we're going to get crushed. And we made the decision to go upstream and say, we're going to focus on enterprise. That was a really, really important decision for us. And that took the business to a whole new level. You almost can't niche down enough. So my, I, I would say, I'm feeling good about your niche and your differentiation and how you look at the business. I mean, I've, I've looked, you got an excellent book. You really detail it. Uh, the practice in a different way, the five figures to the six figures. But I think you've got another iteration or two that's left. We don't know what that is, but as long as you're attuned to it, you probably got to niche down even more. A lot of uh, content entrepreneurs are scared to do that. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to limit my audience. You actually want to limit your audience as much as you can. You want to get to a point where you can say, I am the leading informational expert to this group of people, to this content niche. And you and I both know, like, I don't even know if I, I can't say that in our area with the tilt. I mean, there's a lot of competition. So we're really trying yeah. to niche down to a point where, oh, okay, to these people, yes, we can be that leading resource. So I would put that out there there. Okay, so we've got that. Now, where, where can we go? What are the things that you can do to prepare yourself for this 10K journey? And I think one thing is, Let's look at search engine optimization and where you're going. So I'm going to list a couple of things and then I want to get your take on where you're at and how you're thinking about it. So findability, key part, portion of findability. So, so what we want to do at this point in the journey is predictable sources where you can drive newsletter subscribers. So we're at 10 to 20 a week. We want to be at 10 to 20 a day like you're talking about. I think that's and those are net because we're going to lose some people as we go. Mm -hmm. So first of all, findability with search engine optimization. We want to have 20, 30, 40, 50 keywords that you know that that audience and that particular niche are searching for. And we've got to make sure that we're findable. And that's the two biggest search engines. We've got Google and we've got YouTube. And we want to make sure that we're being found in both of those and we want to track both of those. So I would absolutely look at that. So that's one I want to get your take on. The second thing is let's look at subscriber packages and i would call them like almost like lead gen uh packages if you will so you've got 
let's look at the, you've got some amazing assets, Darren. You've got, the book is incredible. Um, you've got a, a lot of the, the blog posts that you've done. But in a lot of cases, your call to action is subscribe to my email. Nothing wrong with that, but we want to give that extra giveaway. What's the extra thing? So you might want to look at some of the content assets you have in the book, in your blog post, that you can put together some deliverable. So when we were at nothing subscribers for Content Marketing Institute, and I was just say sign up to the email newsletter. It was fine. We were getting a trickle in until we said, okay, if you sign up to our email newsletter, you get this exclusive research report, this exclusive uh, 42 case studies on content marketing that are perfect for you. And we would switch these out and test these all the time. I want to make sure that you're looking at those and, we, and you should have a couple of these because that'll lead into the third point, content partnerships. Obviously, you're doing a great job with content partnerships because you and I have a content partnership right now that we're working on. But again, you want predictable sources of signups for your email newsletter. And those will come from competitors in a lot of cases for your niche. And we want to set those up on an ongoing basis so that they're promoting your stuff, you're promoting their stuff. But when you do that, you can't just say, hey, uh, in whatever somebody else's email, and let's say it was in our email, the tilt, hey, sign up for Darren's email newsletter. You're not going to get a lot of reaction. But if it was like, oh my God, Darren has the 10 step process for taking your business from five figures to six figures, click on it here, sign up. That's going to obviously get more people. So mm -hmm. now I would start to look at the assets that you have to put that together so that when you set up these core partnerships, because again, we want predictable ways. So you don't have to get up in the morning and say, how am I going to drive more subscribers today? You've been working on a process of SEO, findability, two key sources, and then these content blocks, if you will, or tentpole projects like we talked about on the last show that you can leverage out to partners and you can come in. So I'm going to stop right there. I've talked a lot. I want to kind of get your take on findability, your content projects that you're thinking about, and then with the partnerships that you're looking at. Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm nearly emotional because like you actually spoke to a lot of the frustrations that I felt of like, man, what am I going to do today to get 20 people to my website or hundred people to my website? So when you say 20, 30 predictable sources of traffic that just like lit up, like all the idea, uh, light bulbs started flicking on. Um, okay. So SEO is a big one. I've been thinking about the last six months or so. Um, I have, uh, I've done like the technical SEO side of things really well as far as like using H1 and H2 tags and having descriptions and, ha you know, putting text under alt image text and all those kind of technical SEO things. The big thing I got wrong is that I was writing things like how to market your business like a surprise road trip. Sure. As a blog post or a newsletter. So what I do strategically is I write a newsletter and then I put it out as a blog post so that I, it's got an archive there and it's got searchability, right? Um, and so I even hired an SEO expert to come in and just go like, what's going on here? First thing you noticed was Google wasn't indexing hardly any of my sites. So I had 100, 120 different blog posts and it was indexing like eight of them. So we fixed that and Im immediately like, an ex, you know, it double or tripled my stop right there for once. Cause a lot of people, what did you do? So people can under like, is there something specific that a lot of people might not be doing? We had different tools. Like there's Google. It starts with a W maybe webmaster Web, tools. Webmaster tools. Yeah, yeah. Went in there, put in the, put in the domain and looked at it and then said, okay, what's not working. And then basically I went to my website, crawled it or like grabbed the site index and grabbed that link put it into Google webmaster tools. And like a week later, there were now 130 pages indexed instead of 12. So that instantly told Google like, Oh, there's actually more pages on this website and more traffic started coming in organically. It doubled it over like a two week period. So that was a big thing, but the bigger shift was a mindset shift or a different approach to what I was writing. So the content didn't change a ton, as far as the way that I format my newsletter and it's like a thousand word kind of blog post embedded in the newsletter that turns into a blog post, but all of a sudden it became much more SEO friendly as far as what I was calling the posts. So how to get this outcome is basically where I, where I start every new post from, because if I'm a creator and I want to know 
how to set up an email list, then I should title my blog post how to set up an email list as opposed to, you know, email is the best. <laughs> Follow me or sure. whatever I was calling it before. And so I'm trying to be more strategic with just the initial like findability and the initial kind of like paragraph or two so that if and when people come from Google or from search to my site, they go, oh, this is exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to keep reading. Okay. So before we go on, thank mm -hmm. you for that. That was very helpful. So we know that there's a lot of, um, I guess, frequently asked questions. If you look at Marcus Sheridan, uh, amazing, so they have he has a book called They Ask, You Answer. He's always like, answer the questions that your customers are looking for, which is really good advice, except in our cases, you have a ton, a ton of competition. I mean, some of the stuff that you just talked about, he's like, you, you, got a, you got a million companies that are trying to land for the same thing. So look at the ones that you can actually compete with, some of those medium uh, competitive words. Mm -hmm. So you can use tools like Hrefs, you can use tools like SEM uh, Rush to, to figure those things out. So, so that's great. The other thing that I want you to focus on, and this is something I, I don't know if you've get, given some thinking to, but if you were to say, what are two or three phrases that I am going to land for no matter what? Like, is that the craftsman content approach? I'm making this up. I don't know. You have to tell me. But whatever it is that you want to be found for as the expert, you want to make sure that you're promoting that out as a thing. And I'll give you two examples that we've done that really well. That, and I believe in this wholeheartedly. Like, if you need to be known for something. So like HubSpot is known for inbound marketing. They put everything around in, about inbound marketing and you type anything around inbound and you will find HubSpot. Fine, whatever. We did the same thing with content marketing at Content Marketing Institute. Nobody was using that term at the time. We said, we're going to position ourselves around this. We took a bet. We were doing the other stuff. We were answering those other questions. But at the same time, we said, okay, content marketing, that's our thing. So what is content marketing? What's a content marketing approach? Content marketing strategy? Those are key keywords. All right, so I leave that. I come over to the creator economy, focusing on the tilt. I'm all in this area, and you and I have talked about it. You call it creative entrepreneur. I call it content entrepreneur. If I'm going to think of a content creator that really wants a meaningful business and wants to be financially independent, that means it's a content entrepreneur to me. So right now, I'll go type in content entrepreneur, and I think we're like the tilt stuff, and our stuff is like seven out of the 10 results. So I'm not, I don't need you. I guess what I want you to do is think about what those keywords are and people listening to this. Like you've got to focus on something that only you can be known for that you're going to take a bet on uh, where Andrew Davis calls it. We talked about it last episode, these rarely asked questions. What is your thing? So I want you to think about that as you go forward. And then now let's kind of think about, all right, you've got some real key assets here. How are you? How are you thinking about like, okay, let's take the book. So you've got this amazing book. How are you going? Are you thinking about chopping this up? Are you chopping it up into little different pieces? What, what's the next step with the book? Yeah. So my, um, I mean, I'm not revealing anything I shouldn't reveal, but like my goal was at 2,500 Twitter followers mm -hmm. to release a little three-step guide, like the, the shortened version of the, journey I talk about in the book, how to go from five to six figures. It's like, here's three steps. Here's how to get started. And it's a yep. free like ebook download, probably 10, 15 pages long, something like that. So I have it written. It's designed. It's ready to go. I just am at like 2,398 followers. Or something. <laughs> so it was a, it was just like a, a goal. Cause I, I'm yep. really good at creating products and creating assets like that. Like that's easy for me. So I could release one of those a week if I really wanted to, but it was motivating me to get to that 2,500 point so that I could release it. That was just knowing myself and understanding how I work and being strategic about it. Perfect. So that'll become a lead magnet on the website. Now that you've brought that, that idea, <laughs> it wasn't initially part of the strategy, but it makes perfect sense to integrate that, you know, and use the convert kit kind of pop-ups and exit intent pop-ups and things like that to just say, get the free guide, get the free yep. guide, get this thing. And I, I think that'll help a ton. Well, so, okay. Now these things are all connected. 
and you probably already figured this out, but maybe some people didn't. So you take your SEO, right? Here's where I want to be found for. And then your content packages, let's say you have four or five key ones, which I would recommend to anyone you should have. You have different calls to action on each one of those pages that are found. And yeah. then you have your partnership list that you're making. And the partnership list is where you're going to steal audience from. So, okay, there's where's my audience at right now? I'm going to make that list of partners. And then what is the content asset that I can associate with each one of those partners, depending on that particular niche of that audience? Mm. So those three things work really well together. And when you get that working, it takes, you know, it takes nine to 12 to 15 months to really get that process going. But when that happens and you do all this stuff, I would anticipate that you will get those 10 to 20 to 30 email signups a day without you having to do any additional work. Yeah. Because the process is already moving. You've already thought about these things instead of what a lot of creators, you already mentioned this, what a lot of content entrepreneurs, content creators do, they get up and like, I need more subscribers today. Where am I going to find those things? If you're at that point, just stop for a second and let's get more strategic. Because there is a process yeah. and there's a, there's a way that you can do this outside of, you know, getting the next viral hit on TikTok or, or YouTube or whatever. Yeah, we so, default to what can I create today to get more people to my site as opposed to how can I be more strategic? What partnerships? What what can I go and look at as far as what pages are performing? And how do I optimize those? How do I put a different, you know, um, so I think that's an important thing I'm taking away is like, yeah, my default still is, okay, I get up today and I have an hour to work on my creative stuff. What am I going to do? I'm going to write the next blog post, right? I'm going to write the next thing. I've, I'm content first instead of thinking more strategically yeah. about partnerships and where the traffic's coming from, building a new rev, a new traffic stream. So this is good because it's been what I think been thinking about the last six months, but I haven't implemented it and it where i have implemented little bits you're talking about a full system that includes these three parts and i've done like one or one and a half parts so the which system, by the way the work if you only do one or one and a half parts it, it's well <clears throat> i've worked with content professionals for a long long time and most content creators think that the majority of their job is creating content and that is not true the majority like I would say 20, 25% of your, your time is creating content. Now, a content creator doesn't want to hear that. You got to remember that you are a business owner first and foremost. So what you got to figure out is, oh, I'm going to create this content and you are going to market that content, promote that content in a different way to get people to you. And then you're going to drive revenue in all there. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But when I talk to content marketers about it, like I'll go through a, an audit and I'll say, oh, we're doing all these things. And then you'll realize that most of the things that they're creating aren't getting a lot of traction. And I'll say, let's kill some of these things that you're doing so that mm -hmm. you can spend more time on marketing and promoting the thing. Because why are you creating more content when people aren't engaging in it? You're just wasting your time. And again, that's back to the passion. That's back to maybe what we're comfortable at doing as content creators. But you've got to always remember that the first and foremost thing that you are is an entrepreneur. You just happen to also be a content creator. Uh, most content creators come at it. I'm first, I'm a content creator. That's not true. If you just want to be a content creator, then you should probably work for somebody else. You should be a freelance writer. You should be a content marketer at a company, something like that. You should not be a content entrepreneur because it is very difficult to create it, but you have to do all the other things as you go. So, okay. So that's that. We want to finish off this episode talking about my favorite topic, revenue. So this is a really good point, especially as you're going to go off in the wilderness without me. And I haven't mentioned that, but we're going to talk about it a little bit, Darren, the, the next episode, I will not be with you because I want you to do some things, but uh, let's, let's think, because you talked about where you're at with revenue. You've got you know, sometimes it's a couple hundred bucks, sometimes it's a couple thousand bucks. So what I want you to think about is all the different levers that you can pull. And are we looking at all those things? I know last uh, episode, I challenged you a little bit on sponsorship when we weren't thinking about sponsors. But so if you go and look at the content Inc. model, we've talked about a lot of this, you've got uh, your sweet spot, your content tilt, you're, you're building the base of so what's your base, you know, you've got your base of your, your email. 
Uh, I've got my base at the tilt. That's that's our email. And then you get into building audience. And we've talked a lot of ways today about building that audience. Now we're into revenue and diversification. And these are advanced areas. So a lot of people listening to this might not be at the point where they can say, oh, okay, I'm at that level. But you should start thinking about it immediately. You have to start thinking about all the different ways to drive revenue immediately because content creators stop when they don't see that revenue coming in because you have to, you gotta, I mean, you're not, you gotta pay the bills. You got things that you need to do for your family and yourself and you, you need to make sure you're taking care of that. So let's, let's talk about, we wanna get and try at this point as many different types of revenue as possible. There's really eight different ways that a content creator, content entrepreneur can do this. We've talked about some, but this is a point where, hey, could we do an event online or in-person event of some kind. You've got sponsorships to that event. You've got paid registration to that event that you could think about. You've got just advertising and sponsorship for all the things that you're doing. Like, for example, we could go back and say, maybe your book could have been sponsored. Hmm. I don't know. Did you, th a lot of people don't, yeah. don't think about that. Like, like my, my latest book. So I've got Epic Content Marketing coming out in february the second version that's with mcgraw hill that version that can't be sponsored because mcgraw hill is publishing it right. but if you don't have a traditional sponsor publishing could you get something like that sponsored a possibility is there you could do an ebook you could do an audiobook version that's sponsored so lots of things going on there affiliate programs are another one we could look at there are a lot of media companies like a mother jones or wikipedia that have donations so that's a lot of people don't think that whether it's Kickstarter, whether it's on each page, it's like, I want to keep continuing this great content. If you want to support me, click here, $10 a month. So a lot of people think, oh, I need to have paid subscribers, which is another revenue generating opportunity. A lot of Substack going on. Hey, will somebody pay for my stuff? Well, maybe they'll donate to it as well. So a lot of people, I love the donation angle, especially for those people listening, if you have a cause or something that's really, really critical mm -hmm. that people want this information. So, okay, then you've got the subscriptions. And then you've got, and then you're going to talk about some of this, I think, you've got some products and services. So you could products, you could actually create a course, a product, you could sell merch, all sorts of things. You could actually sell an actual independent product, if you will, or you've got services. Consulting, the way that I made it when... It was the tough times, the ramen noodle years, as my wife calls them for Content Marketing Institute, was consulting. And a lot of people do, cons some people do, hey, I'm going to charge $50 or $75 or whatever for my time. I looked for larger consulting, pro I wanted fewer projects at a larger price point so that I could focus more of my time on building the content business. Because every time that you do consulting services, you're probably taking a little bit of time away from building your content entrepreneurial journey, if you will, your, your product stack there. So it's, I'm not against consulting. You do whatever you can to keep the lights on, but it's generally your, that's time that you're spending with somebody else's problems. And that's always a concern with me. So you do what you can to keep the lights on, but there. So that's, kind of laying the groundwork of those, Darren, where, where are you at from the eight that I just went through? Are there some like, are, are you in, are you doing any on a, the affiliate side? Let's talk a little bit about your products. You've got some courses. Are there some areas that you really feel there's an opportunity that you haven't looked at yet? Uh, yes. So I have products and I have coaching and consulting. And I have a membership site that is kind of the paid newsletter, so to speak, of the business. So, um, you know, that's made maybe a thousand dollars this year. Um, I have the book, which is made just under a thousand dollars this year. Um, sponsorships is not something that I have done except for this podcast, and really, I attribute all the credit to you and your team for doing the sponsorships there. Zero, it was your idea. So you got to remember enough. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that's. That's going to be five figures of revenue for me from sponsorships. So it's it's a very like it's a smack in the head of like should have been doing sponsorships all along because we could make that uh, a thing really easily. Um, so the next project that I'm working on is a more niche project for filmmakers, uh, which is kind of 
centered around budgeting and, and budget templates. So there's definitely opportunity for sponsorships there because I'm using apps to build these budgets. It'd be really easy for two or three companies to come on as sponsors. So that's something that I've been thinking a lot about the last few weeks as we've been talking about sponsors and realizing that, oh, I have not thought about this. What does that look like for my business? Um, and then even thinking about sponsorships for the newsletter, um, I've reached out to about a dozen people over the last week to say, hey, I'm starting up sponsorships. I think you'd be perfect. I want to offer you the first slot. And I've had a lot of interest. And so even at 850 newsletter subscribers, I went out leading with $100 and there's interest there. So now I'm even thinking about, well, how do I do this in a different fun way? Because I kind of like to think of it sometimes that way. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the right mechanism and system and stuff. But right now it's like, hey, PayPal me a hundred bucks and I'll put you in the newsletter. Like, let's keep it simple. So that's great. Um, those things are happening. I definitely use affiliates. That's something I've used on my course business. And so with my own stuff, um, I'm thinking about where it, where affiliates can be helpful. Um, might need you to prompt me with some of the other <laughs> the other ones there. No, that's good. That, that, <laughs> that, that, that's a good that's a good place to stop. So um, so again, as we're sort of as we're wrapping up this episode. Depending on where you're at in your subscriber journey, if you will, now is the time that we want to figure out predictable ways to drive audience and subscribers. And then at the same time, we want to figure out ways to drive revenue. Not You're not going to keep all these ways forever, but we're going to see which ones work. And you might say, hey, that, that sponsorship thing, that absolutely works. And, and I push sponsorship more than most because... The majority of the content creators that I work with that's in our audience base, they focus on driving direct revenue from the audience, which there's not a problem with. But you got to remember that the majority of money is not usually with your audience. It's on the sponsor side. So you're just you're missing out on this huge opportunity if you don't look at it from that perspective. And I come from the media publishing side, so I automatically think sponsor first. And that to me is more low hanging fruit then creating a process for people to not only get subscribed, but then you hopefully they trust you enough to buy whatever product or course or something that you created. Nothing wrong with that, but I think I would start on the sponsor side first. So, all right. So here's my, as we, as we side off this episode, I am going to line up a few interviews with you. So the next episodes are, We'll, we'll leave it for people. There's, these are the best of the best that are going to come on with you and kind of take you the rest of the way so that I'll come back later at the Ted K Creator Podcast Show to see where you're at and what you've learned over the past few weeks. So unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for you, <laughs> next episode, it won't be me. It's going to be you and some amazing expert focusing on something that they're really good at that you can take away. And I'm excited about this because I'm hoping that by the time you and I talk again, you've got a bunch of takeaways and you've sort of really built out this business over the 10 weeks of the show. And, and we've got something there. So if, is that OK if we do that with the next few episodes? Oh, yeah, I think that sounds amazing. It feels like I've uh, entered my own hero's journey. If you're pulling that, <laughs> a Joseph Campbell reference there, um, which is super exciting. I'm like Luke Skywalker. Let's go, man. <laughs> That's, yeah, exactly. So we're, we're going to have a good time with it. So before we sign off and we haven't done this on the last couple, but just so people, if they want to connect with you, um, you know, you know, give the places that people can find you, subscribe to you and everything with Craftsman and what you're doing. Yeah, well, you know, the true fans are finding me no matter what. So that's been fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, the best place to find me online, like on social media is on Twitter. So I'm at Darren T. Smith. And then you can just go to craftsmancreative.co. And that has everything I'm working on. You can sign up for my newsletter. You can look at my book. You can see the, the community I've put together for creators. All of it's there on that page. Um, so those are the two places to check perfect, out. Perfect. And I'm at Joe Polizzi, P-U-L-I-Z-Z-I -Z -Z on everywhere, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, what, Instagram, whatever the case is. And then everything that I'm doing right now is mostly on thetilt.com. So that's our newsletter and our focus on the creator economy and content entrepreneurs as we go. And before we sign off again, special thanks to the sponsors of the 10K Creator Podcast Show. 
uh, Lulu uh, StreamYard and ConvertKit. We couldn't have done this without you. And please, if you would, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, please subscribe. You can go to 10kcreatorshow.com. It'll take you right to the page with all the episodes moving forward. Um, you know that we're doing kind of a little interesting experiment being on the Content Inc. stream versus creating a whole different podcast. So far, it's working great. So our little evil plan is working, Darren. So again, thank you so much for listening, but please subscribe to the show, share with your friends, get this out there. Hopefully this is very helpful for you. And I will not see you next episode, but Darren will with a yeah. surprise guest. So please stay tuned for that. Thanks again for listening. Hey creators, that's it for today's episode. And another special thanks to our sponsors, Lulu, ConvertKit, and StreamYard for making this season of the 10K Creator possible. Now you can find links and show notes at 10kcreatorshow.com. And every week we'll have different giveaways for people who share the show with their friends and audiences. So head over to 10kcreatorshow.com to learn more. If you're listening for the first time, be sure to subscribe to the Content Inc. podcast as this show will be on the Content Inc. feed each week. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next episode.